but we didn't cover that much so so far. All right, so we're going to try to send now we're going to try to send data from one computer to another computer. So to be able to do this, uh, if you're still downloading, are you just still downloading, Sai? I just need to send it back. Okay, great. Uh, Great. So what I'm going to need you guys to connect to uh, this other network that's in here called DisguiseNet. It's going to kill your internet connection because it doesn't have internet on it. But connect to DisguiseNet. The password is media server. Okay. So now we're all on DisguiseNet. So now, if I'm going to send data to somebody else's computer, I need to know what their IP address is. So let's figure out what your IP address is. There is a way inside of Max that will work if you have the Java working, uh, and that is uh, MXJ uh, net dot uh local i think yes um just open up the help file for this so we don't have to build this stuff and bang this here and then it'll create it'll create a drop down menu here and then you want to find uh let's see we don't want the loopback address that's not it it's not it. En so e, mine is en zero. If I think the en zero, if I change this drop down to the middle one on my computer, it probably should be one of yours. Then you change this, you should be able to find what your address is, which is my case, it's 192.168.19. I believe we all should have 192.168.1, and then an individual number after that. So I'm nine. Who, what is somebody else? Did you option click on the net local? Okay, well, screw it. We got well, there's another way of finding your IP address. So I guess they got rid of net.local for some reason. So you can go into system preferences and go to network. And right here under your Wi-Fi connected, it'll tell you what your IP address is right here. So somebody give me an IP address. There we go. All right. Let's see. So yours is 19. So if I send this to UDP send 192.168.1.19, and I send, I'll send this to here. Uh, did you get it? Yes. So there it is. Let's. Why don't you guys try sending it to me? I'm number nine. So change this to UDP send one ninety two one sixty eight one nine. 
and now send me some text. It should pop up on my on my screen right here. Keep it appropriate. All right, I'm not receiving anything from anybody but myself. Is that not working, I guess? Why can I send it to you, but you can't send it to me? Has anybody sent this to me? Wait, somebody sent me a text. There we go. There we go. I'm getting somebody. All right. So who sent me woohoo? That's me. Okay. Let's see. Somebody sent me somebody. Somebody sent me something else. There we go. I got. I think there was two different things that came there. So is anybody's not sending? Try to. Everybody stop. Anybody who hasn't seen their message, don't send any more. People who haven't seen their message, try sending a message now. Say do something and tell me if you see it. So okay. So there's a couple people that can't get it to go through. Yeah, Sai, what's up? Did you try closing Max and reopening it again? Uh, but right, this doesn't require Java that we're doing right now. When I try to broadcast this, the data to all of you, you'll need Java in order to easily receive that data. Uh, so whose isn't working? Put your hand up if, if yours isn't working. Put your hand up if yours isn't working. And keep it up so I can see which one you are. There we go. Okay, great. All right, so that's not going through. 192, 168, 19. Yeah, that should work. Are you connect what are you which are you connected to? All right, so you need to be connected to DisguiseNet, or this won't work. Yeah, DisguiseNet. The password is media server. All lowercase. Okay. Oh, I, yeah. So there we go. That's me. So that was probably what your guys' issue are, is. Uh, your Wi Fi? Yeah, no, I, I got it. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I'm okay. just taking away all my stuff. All right, so are we good to move on? Is it working now? No? Your still isn't working? Oh, your, okay, so your Max, did you still have installed? Did you start installing Java? Yeah, it did. Um, but it didn't work, huh? So try closing Max and uh, saving this, closing it, and reopening it. Yeah, quit and reopen. Darn. Uh, so maybe it need maybe it needs to be that different version of Max that it was calling for. I mean of uh, Java that it was calling for in the help file. Mine did. I didn't even download the Java. It didn't work. So yours didn't work either. No, You're, my you, Java. No, I mean I, I sent you the message, but my Java didn't install. Right. This part doesn't need Java, so uh, yours still doesn't work either. No, I, I sent. That was the one. I, sent. I mean the Java part. Oh yeah. Work. Okay. So everybody who had to install Java, that's not still not working. Okay. So I think we have to install a different version of Java. Yes. Question. Uh, I thought you. I thought we had fixed it. All right. What are you connected to? All right. So that's right. So UDP ten. Uh, there it is. I got it. Or is that it? I don't know. Who sent? Who sent that? The, I, the IP address is 192.168.19. Hmm? No, his was 19. 192.168.19.64. should work. Oh, because you're routing text and you're not using a text edit. edit. Just send, a dip, send that straight into the UDP set. Nothing is coming out of that route. No, no, no. Okay. Now you attach it to the one that's going to your computer, but not the one that's going to mine. There you go. See, there it is. Okay, so what was the Charlotte? Do you remember what that what it popped up for originally? Did your 
if you're, uh, well, but yours is working now. Mine's working. Yeah, mine is, mine is Okay, working. try, why it is, why did, you had to install it in yours, in yours uh, work. It's saying something about Chrome not being compatible with Chrome. Yeah, mine's oh, I use Safari. Yeah, I'm going to use Safari. Safari. So I guess download Java mm -hmm. again from Safari. Yeah, so it's still not working right. Um, try downloading it from a from Internet Explorer. Yeah, I know. Well, it's it, the kind of things that Google, that Chrome and Firefox do is obviously messing with it. So do go with the um, try Internet. Uh, Edge or whatever it's called now. This is very different. What's this? I really need to go on Safari. So, if try those of you who are still having Java issues, we still aren't quite there yet. So you have a reprieve if you have another twenty minutes or so to try to figure those out. Uh, if you can't figure them out, let me know. I'll try to figure it out for you. Um, okay. So the next thing I want to look at is OSC. Now, OSC mostly uses UDP to send it. It's kind of a, it's more of a, it's not a protocol of how to communicate the way UDP is versus TCP and uh, versus serial. Those are all different communications protocols. Um, OSC is more of a uh, format, is a message format protocol. Uh, and it's an easy way of, of sorting and sending data values that multiple different uh, programs have now adopted. Um, and you can take data from other programs into Max via OSC. So uh, you should have, to get this to work, you need to have the OSC route object. If you don't have OSC route, you might not. I put it on the website. If you go to sites jitter and uh, hello, come on. Oh, right. If you connect off of the disguise neck back onto CalArts and go to the website, yeah, welcome to D3L. <laughs> there we go. And go back to week and go to week ten. I put in here the OSC route max help file and the OSC route max object. Both of these files, mm -hmm. take download those, and put them in your max seven uh, library file library folder. Uh, max seven. There should be, in your Mac 7, there should be a folder called library. That's where I would put them. Okay. If you've already downloaded the CN mat externals for some reason, that already has it in it. But that's a huge file, so I just gave you guys the, just the file we need. So we're supposed to download OSC. OSCroute.mxo and OSCroute.maxhelp. <coughs> Yeah, and put them in your in your 
max7 library, uh, library folder. Okay. The the other object, the other thing you can downloaded. Yes, you can go ahead and, and unzip those. We're not quite ready to use those yet. All right. So, UDP. I mean, sorry. Uh, OSC data gets sent via U UDP. So we're going to create kind of a, a quick um, UDP object um, interface. There it is. <coughs> So, so let's, let's just have three toggles here and a slider. Three toggles and a slider. Okay, now go ahead and make an OSC route object. OSC dash route. It should work. If it doesn't work, then you didn't install the library. Got it? OSC route. Okay. Before we can route this, we need to send it and then receive it back to ourselves. We're going to use a UDP send localhost. So we're just going to send this to ourselves. One, two. Let's let's do a different port. Let's do five thousand. Most times, you can pretty much just arbitrarily pick whatever port you want. There are a few ones that are reserved. But I've never bumped into any. I don't. I don't think there are actually any reserved ports of UDP. There are reserved ports of TCP. Like eighty is for HTML traffic. I know. Okay. So we have a UDP send. We're going to need a UDP receive five thousand. Okay. So whatever we send in here, we'll receive out of this. Okay, so now we just need to pack this in the way, in an OSC format. So the way OSC routes things is it uses forward slashes to denote like um, a category, and then you can have subcategories with another forward slash after that, and then you can have values in there um, in a third level. You can have as many subcategories as makes sense for your data structure. And uh, different programs will have different uh, that different programs that have implemented OSC will have will have their own routing tags and stuff, how things are are how things are routed. This is a common uh, this this would be a common way you would see an OSC message formatted. Let's do a prepend object. Whoops, not that. Uh, prepend and this is what we're going to put before the value. We're going to put forward slash Arduino, forward slash button one. All right. And then let's, let's duplicate this two more times and change this to button two and button three. And then go ahead and attach each of these toggles up to that. And then let's also do a prepend. Uh, let's change this uh, to uh, instead of button three, the last one we'll say pot as a potentiometer, which is a slider. Let's say the the range of values in Arduino usually is zero to ten twenty three. So let's make that the same as the value range of values coming from this slider. So you can go down here and just range, say 1023. Right? That's for the slider. That's for the slider. Now you can take each one of these and pass it into the UDP send. Right, and now go ahead and make a receive. Just put a message here for a minute on the UDP receive, and then go ahead and activate these toggles. And this is the this is when you see this style of message. 
you'll recognize it as OSC. And this, the cool thing about OSC is the formatting is consistent and all the programs that implement OSC know how to sort things based on these, on these um, tags that we've added, right? So we've added two sorting tags here. We've have, we have, first we have Arduino, then we have a subcategory of button one, two, or three, and then we have the value of either zero or one, right? So we can route to get this data out. So this is, we're creating an OSC message. This might be the way that you create OSC to send to some other program that implements OSC. In that case, it probably wouldn't be Arduino that you're putting here. It would be whatever the protocol is for that application. And you can, if they implement OSC, there's a document somewhere that shows you what it's looking for and how to communicate with it, right? Maybe if we have any time left, and I don't think we will, I, I'll, I'll try and look at QLab really quick and how to make things work with QLab. Uh, if we don't get to that, maybe we'll look at that in a later at a later time. Uh, but QLab you can control via OSC, and you can have um, triggers from QLab come in on OSC. Same kind of way, you just set up in QLab. You set up the IP address to be the IP address of the of the computer that's running the Max Patch, and then you set up in QLab the port, and then you make sure that here in your Max Patch you're receiving on the same port. And everything should work. All right, so OSC route. Sorry, let's actually do this now. So we're gonna route first. We're gonna route by uh, route for Arduino. Uh, so forward slash Arduino. So coming out of the UDP receive. Yes, question. Uh, so my OSC route is not working. Your OSC route is still not. Yeah. It, did you download the OSC route object? I did. Did you put it in your Max Seven? Um, library folder. Well, I have the Max Seven library, the Max Seven folder that I have right now in Washington. So it doesn't have a library. Oh, we'll just put it in your Max Seven folder then. And then you might need to restart Max. Okay. So OSC route forward slash Arduino. What you should now have is. Uh, It will take off the word our forward slash Arduino, and it will give you the net the subcategories. Now, we can sort by this all of the subcategories. Is that a question, Sai? Yeah, help file. The what? Okay. It shouldn't be. You shouldn't have to do that. You might have to restart Max or something, and you won't have to do that. I don't know. Well, if you got it working by putting MXO, just put MXO for now. I'll take a look at what's going wrong later. All right. So now we can sort by all the subcategories. Uh, at the, and we can do this all in the same object. So we can say forward slash button one, space forward, whoops, Button one, space forward slash button two, space forward slash button three, space forward slash button four. No, it wasn't button four, it was pot. And now it gives you multiple outputs and you can get the values from each of these. Whoops. So actually, let's just do two, uh, three toggles. And a slide, uh, duplicate the slider up here so it has the same range. Anything it doesn't sort will come out the last outlet, which you can patch onto the next OSC route object. So I could, uh, actually, no, that's not the way we want to do that. We want to have it come from here because it's first going to sort by Arduino and then sort by these. If this, if we pass anything else, it would that it didn't that we didn't route for it would come out this last outlet. So I'm just going to attach a message to this, and uh, let's just uh, do let's set this up real quick as a test. So just to duplicate this uh, prepend Arduino pot and change this to uh, 
else. It doesn't matter. Something else. And make it a message. And patch that into the local host. And so anything else would come over here, would come out that last outlet. And it tells you what that sorting, what that sorting is that it didn't do the sort on. So it's saying forward slash else test. Right? Yeah, question. Yeah, all right, whatever. Download download that. Yay, Windows! Ruining everything. So go just go into Google and type in CNMAT externals. CNMAT externals. Download CNMAT for Windows. I guess they're, they're, those objects are different on Windows. What? I'm going back. I had to show Sai something. Oh, sorry, that's why I stopped talking. Okay. <laughs> All right. This slider, if you duplicated it from this one, then you don't have to. Okay, but if you made a new one, you have to. Right. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Just duplicate the one up here so that it has the same range. Okay. So now we've looked at UDP and we've looked at OSC as a messaging format to send over UDP. Uh, there is MIDI also. Let's look at MIDI really quick. Uh, so with MIDI, what we're probably, you, you have, there's different types of MIDI no, um, information. MIDI is musical instruments. Come on, Anna, help me out. Musical instrument. Musical, oh, I don't actually know. Oh, that. musical instrument digital interface, I think. So it was a, like developed back in the early 70s or maybe even earlier than that. I'm not sure. Uh, as a way for synthesizers to communicate with each other or for keyboards to communicate with synthesizers. So like when you have a synthesizer keyboard, most people are used to the keyboard having a speaker on it and making its own sound. But professional synthesizers and older synthesizers didn't have any speaker on them. It's just a keyboard. And it sends out MIDI. And you plug that into a synth. And that synth makes the actual sound. And if you want it to make if you want that keyboard to make a different sound you plug it into a different synth or you change the patch on the synth that you have right that synth takes midi input in the form of the notes that you're playing how long you're playing them how hard you're pu pushing the note um, it'll also take other midi information on how to switch the patch to a different patch load different things there's all types of different kinds of midi info that different programs take and it would take a long time to we'd take an entire class to go over all of them but m mostly if you're triggering things I usually communicate in notes when I'm triggering things if I want to send a data value like a slider then I usually do a, a control change these are the two the, these are two main types of da MIDI data notes Control changes. Notes are when you hit keys on a keyboard. I uh, originally control changes were originally the the like the bend wheel on the side that would make it go woo 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 right. Just because those originally were what the use of that format was for doesn't mean we have to use it for that. We can use it for whatever we want, right? So uh, I usually use uh, notes to trigger things so I uh, you can use make note is a way of making a MIDI note let's just whoops make note and uh, the arguments for make note is what the note is and how long is it or is that velocity no it's uh, the arguments are what the uh, what the velocity is, how hard it gets played, 
and how long to play it. So let's say it's uh, the velocity and triggering things doesn't matter a lot. The maximum velocity, which is basically it's velocity of you hitting the key, key on a keyboard. So a high velocity is hitting it hard, meaning it's going to be louder. So the MIDI range values go from 0 to 127. Um, when we're just doing a trigger, the velocity doesn't matter that much. I would definitely put it over 50, and I would probably not do it as 127 if you're actually going to send it over a cable. If you send things at maximum um, voltage over the cable, there's the possibility that it can leak voltage into another line. If you're using more than one line, that can cause date MIDI um, jitteriness. You usually don't get, when you're actually playing a MIDI keyboard, you usually don't ever get 127 because you'd have to like, you know, like bang on the keyboard really hard. Uh, so I try to avoid 127. I use just a regular value. 60 is the one that's in the help file. That's fine for me. And 1000 doesn't really matter in our case because we're not going to really look at the note off. We only really care about the note on. But uh, that's the way make, make note. It creates a MIDI value and, uh, and then it sends the note off after the specified time. So then we use a note out object. So let's just duplicate um, duplicate all, all of these right here from the help file. Just copy that and paste it over here. Okay. We can send this now. Now the note out, if you double click this, it will you can select what your MIDI device is. So if you had a MIDI device, you'd be able to send it, you'd be able to pick that MIDI device from the list. Do you guys have a from max in your list? In your li in this list, when you double click on note out, do you guys all have from max? Does anybody not have from max? Let's just pick from max. From max one. And now we're going to receive this note. Um, so if we hit, if we send a value to this make note, a value between 0 and 127, it'll create that note. Uh, 5. And you can see that, vol that velocity went up to 60 and then went back to 0. That's the note on, then the note off. Okay? That would be sending to a MIDI, a MIDI synthesizer right now. And if you had a MIDI synthesizer attached to this, you would hear it go bing. You might even be able to do it yourself. If you have AUDLS synth, if you click that, you should be able to hear it yourself. Um, pick a higher value, like uh, 60. So there you go. I heard a, I heard a piano. Um, if you choose a, a, lo a note that's too low, you might not hear it. Right? So you can send it to the synth if you have one. You can send it to from max one, and you should be able to now receive it in the same from max. So it's uh, note in, I think. Note in. Open the help file for that. Oh, it's just the three out. Okay, great. So then the three here. Just let's just steal this from the help file, so that way we have all the comments in here about what it is. Copy this, paste it. Now we should get, if we set these both to from max, if you send to one, you should receive on the other. And you don't. Yay. Two max. Do I have two max over here? Note out. Hmm. All right, so that not that's not working on my end. Is that it, I I guess it's not working for you guys either, right? All right. So what I usually do on this is I use the IAC driver. You guys probably don't have that, but we should turn that on. Uh, Windows, you're out of luck here. There. So yeah, it works with the IAC driver. So 
to get your IAC driver, this is how I usually do all of my communicating with MIDI. You go to, um, is it here? I think it's a separate thing, MIDI. Maybe it's under sound input, let's see. No, see it's not here. Uh, yeah, okay. There is, if you, do a, up, if you do a spotlight search and you search for our audio MIDI setup, that's the application that will actually set this up. Audio MIDI setup, and now you click on, where the hell's my MIDI? View, window, show MIDI studio. <laughs> they make this really hard. There we go. So did you open up audio MIDI setup? So like go into spotlight search and search for audio MIDI setup. You should have this app in your utilities folder. Yeah, IEC driver. So find your IEC driver that's grayed out on your computer and click on it and uh, double click on it and then click on devices online. No, that should be all you need to do. You can add a second port if you want, a second bus um, if you have some reason to. I had in the past, but you guys shouldn't need to do that. Then you'll be able to select that. Um, no? Is, yeah, that's why I said try to just find it by clicking up here in the... the yeah, yeah, really? Okay, so you can't find it? It's under Applications, Utilities, Audio MIDI Setup. Okay, so then when you launch that, then go. you got to go to Window and go to MIDI Studio. MIDI Studio. Then you click on IEC and click on Devices Online. Great. So now on your note out down here, set the IEC driver as your output. And set the same thing as the note in as your input. And then you should be able to send MIDI notes to yourself. Windows. You can't do anything unless you install a third-party application like uh, MIDI route or something. Uh, or you can always have a MIDI interface and patch a cable in a circle. That's a way of doing it too. <laughs> if your MIDI interface has one in and one out. It should actually have one in and one out. All right, so you can use this to trigger things. Like, so say I the, the program that I'm running when I want it to, when I want my max patch to do something like play a sound, let's just grab a sound. Uh, audio, just grab any good, let's see, down at the bottom. Vibes, I don't know, you guys have this, right? Any, any sound, doesn't matter. Drag it into your patcher. Yeah, that works. Oh wait, your patcher has to be unlocked if you want to do that. If you want to drag something into it, I just figured out. Uh, where did that go? Vibes. Okay, and we'll need an easy DAC to be able to hear anything. And patch these two channels in. Turn on your easy DAC by clicking on it, and then if I hit play, it plays that right. So say I want when this MIDI note, when MIDI note 72 comes in, I want it to trigger the vibes. I can just say select 72. Um, I can use the velocity to open a gate so that it has to be, it'll only trigger once. Right, the gate, the velocity is going to be, if it's above zero, we'll open this gate. If it's zero, it'll close the gate.
Uh, oh, and then it's, so that's going to make a bang, and then you send that to a one that you send to the file. So try that out. That should work. Let's try it out. 72. No, it doesn't work. Why? Probably not doing the gate correctly. Oh, no? Yeah, it's probably not doing the gate correctly. Or did I mess something up here? This is in bus one, and this is in, no, that's right. Yeah, it worked, okay. I don't know why it wasn't working before, but it is now. 72, right? So then it plays, it triggers that, right? And if I if I send a different node, it won't send it. it. I have to send 72 to trigger it. So you could have a whole bunch of different MIDI note triggers in your patch that that each one does something else. So you have a select 72. You could have a select uh, 80 and have the 80 do something else, right? Uh, just grab a different sound. That's fine. That's fine. So 80 will trigger this sound effect. And so now if I attach this here, whoops, not there, there, then if I send 80, it triggers. Oh, I forgot to patch it into the uh, speaker. There we go. Uh, 72 was the other one, right? Okay, so that's how you could use MIDI notes from another program or from another Max Patch to trigger things inside your Max Patch. Or you could send them out from your Max Patch to another program like QLab. Arbitrarily. Right, but on the, like, you're not putting it in the... Note, note in? Note. Note in and note out. <laughs> like, no, I'm just coming up. Um, but you're putting it, you're putting it... Are you in here, in the note out. In the note out. So you're just, like, entering it in there. Yes. Yeah. Maybe that's what I was messing up. Was I putting the number down here? I should have been putting the number above the make note. We, yeah. What? So let's let's not do this. Let's just attach to the cell this, and now try it. Send a up here. Send seventy two, and we got two triggers. Because make note and most MIDI keyboards or, you know, this is also how you could trigger a bunch of different things from hitting different keys on a keyboard, right? Each one of those is making a note. But as soon as you let go of that key, it sends a velo it sends the note all over again with velocity zero. And that is what's called a note off. But if we don't use that information to, to filter out that, then that the velocity information to filter out the pitch then we'll get a double trigger, right? So to get around that, ugh, unlock, you son of a gun. We have this gate. That way, if the velocity is zero, it's a note off. It's not going to let any pitches through. Does that make sense? Why do you, why do you patch that 72 in a particular second? Because this is the control inlet, and this is the data inlet. Yeah. Yeah, I know gate is, I always get them mixed up. It's very counterintuitive, the way the inlets are. Yes, any other questions? Are you putting your, your data up here, or are you trying it down here? 
Mm -hmm. Does it not? It. Does it not come out the node in? It comes out the node. It gets, it gets to, the to this. Yeah. It just and doesn't get through the gate. Yeah. So you have the velocity going to the gate. It control so inlet. Inlet, the first inlet, and the pitch goes into the second inlet. You have a select 72 or select something, mm -hmm. and nothing. And you put a message here to make sure that nothing is coming through the gate. All right, so now try it out. Oh, right, I'm hitting the wrong thing, though. I'm, not, I'm hitting the wrong thing. So I get you get nothing. All right, I'll take a look at yours. It's probably some little coding thing. You just got it backwards. Oh no, you don't. Um, that set. So why? Oh, you just you have it attached to the wrong inlet of the message there to see what's coming into your message. Now I'll try to find it. So you are getting data. So then watch. Try sending eighty again. Oh, because you're you're attaching a bang into this me into an empty message. That needs to oh that that message needs to be a one. Oh, it's just a one. It's not sending. Got it. It needs to send a, a you need to bang that a one to a into one. that thing to make it play. Okay. Yeah, that should work. Okay. Cool. All right. Well. I had a really cool patch um, that I was hoping we'd get to, but we'll see. Next, I want to look at, so that's Smitty. Next, I want to look at Serial. So Serial, there's not really a way to emulate Serial to your own computer, and there's no reason to. You would just use, you know, a UDP send or use a, um, OSC or something. But Serial Communication... Um, is mostly used with Macs when you're working with Arduinos. Um, it can also be older hardware. Some older hardware that you want to interface with have serial interfaces, and you can figure out how to make those work with Arduino. You can also send things. Um, like the only other time that I ha the only other time I've used serial where it wasn't an Arduino was was a uh, a pan tilt zoom camera. And I figured out what the protocol was to send serial commands from Max to make this camera move left and right and up and down. And I actually tied it in with um, facial tracking so that the camera would move to keep you in the frame, which was kind of cool. Uh, but uh, with an Arduino, I don't have an Arduino for each of you, so you're just going to have to look at mine. But what I was hoping to do was using this Max hole I can send you the, the values that I'm getting so that you'll all get what the Arduino is sending me. So let's um, look at this first. Okay, so uh, serial, go ahead and type this, you know, go ahead and, and follow along with me even though you won't be able to actually interface with anything. So the serial object, if you open up the help file for that, the, it has two arguments. And, uh, well, it has two main arguments. It has some other stuff that you should never really need to worry about. Uh, but the two main arguments are which port and what baud rate you are communicating at. That has to do with how fast the serial uh, port communicates. So serial communication, there's no error checking. It's not, it doesn't send a packet and then ask the receiver, did you get that packet? It just sends a bunch of data. It doesn't even say where the beginning of one data starts and where the beginning of the other data stops. All it has is these um, start bits, a chunk of data, and then a stop bit. Uh, and you have to be able to, you have to have your serial port set up at the proper rate to be able to know where those start and stop bits are. 
Otherwise, it'll listen at the wrong time and it won't know whether the data chunk, chunk was start, was sent or not. And it'll either give you it'll either give you no data at all or it'll give you garbled data that doesn't make any sense. Um, most of the time with Arduino, you're going to be running at 9600, uh, but 115200, the fastest one, is an also common one um, to see. So uh, let's 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 just make a serial. Uh, I believe, so this, the A here, that's the port. If you hit, actually, let's just, let's close the help file. Let's say serial uh, A for now, 9600. Okay, to be able to see what ports is are on your Arduino, you send the message print to it. This is a really old object, and it has really idiosyncratic um, commands that don't make much sense. This one, I particularly, doesn't make much sense to me. You send the word print to it, and then it tells you what ports are available in your Max window. Okay, so if you have an Arduino, you should see USB modem somewhere in there, and that's the one that you want to select. So for me, it's port C. You guys won't have this, so it won't work for you, but none of this is going to work for you anyway, so... Mm -hmm. Yes, the only, well, there, there's no way of setting your computer up so that it's always port C or always port D. That's always kind of a crapshoot. But what you can't, what should be consistent is the, 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 the name here, USB modem 1411. That might change from one Arduino to another Arduino, but that Arduino should always be 1411 no matter what computer I plug it into. You can say serial USB um, modem 1411, and that should work the same way. Yeah. Um, I'm not getting uh, any of these ports. You won't, because you don't have anything. Like I said, none, this won't work for you guys, but follow along anyway. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to send you guys the data that I'm getting from my Arduino through the max hole. All right. Uh, so I'm now connected to this. All right. Uh, now, if you had a mess, if you had an Arduino, the data would come out the serial port, but only when you bang the serial object. It'll get. It'll return what current byte is being sent. So we need this to be banging constantly, basically. So let's make a. Q Metro, and we'll bang at 30 hertz. So if I turn this on, I get a whole bunch of bangs at 30, 30 per second. And I can pa patch that into the serial USB modem, and now I get a number string. Now, the way serial communicates on Macs anyway, and I think it's this way most places, is you, you don't, you aren't sending the actual data the way, you're sending ASCII, ASCII numbers that are, that, that, that uh, correspond to an ASCII table. So I'm getting a whole bunch of numbers here that these numbers are, don't really represent the final value. These are ASCII representations of what it is. So uh, to get to change ASCII to, um, to to change these integers to uh, into ASCII by using the ASCII table, there's an object to do that automatically called I two A. There's a there's an inverse object called A two I. So the I two A and the A two I. This coming in, these are I's, and we need them to be A's. All right, so now this will turn it into the characters. So those are representative of the different values coming in from my Arduino, but they're coming in serially because it's a serial communication. So they're coming in one at a time. So I and so that doesn't help me very much. It's like when I'm getting the last message on, on the state of something, right? 
to be able to get, I could either do some routing to get these to go where I wanted. If I set my Arduino up correctly with some sort of routing character, I could route based on that routing character. I didn't set my Arduino up there. All I did in my Arduino was send the three values separated by a space and then a carriage return at the end of the, um, at the end of the, uh, at the end of the line. And so I can actually use that carriage return to group these uh, messages into one string. So you use the ZL group object, which if I pass this into the ZL group and then just pass it out, it'll be its like default group size, which I think is like 250 values. So it gives me chunks of 250 numbers. We want it to bang earlier than that, obviously, I think after like four numbers. Um, but we're gonna use we're gonna use the values that are coming in uh, to do that to make a bang. If I send a bang before the before the group is finished populating, it'll send it out early. So then at the end of each line is a is an ASCII ten, which is a new line feed. And if I patch this in, and uh, cell ten, then I get a bang. And if I patch that into the ZL group. Then I get a string of numbers, and this is the, uh, these are, oh, and I forgot, this needs to be coming out of here, and now I get the actual um, numbers. So that is the three buttons here, and a 340. It also has a line feed before this. So uh, I can get rid of that with a zl.filter, and I can filter out the, the line feed, which is 10. So that will remove it from this list. So if I patch that now into the I, ITOA, it gets rid of that weird extra line. And now I just need to get rid of these quotation marks. Those quotation marks is means that it's treating this entire string as a single symbol. You can fix this by using a from symbol object. And now I get values in a way that we can easily work with in Max. Yes? You shouldn't be. You won't have any info. This is you just patch along, even though nothing's going to be coming through because you don't have an Arduino. Yeah. Okay. So now let's try to send you guys info so you can follow along as if you had an in, an Arduino, right? So here here you go. You see you see the numbers coming out. This third value is the potentiometer reading. I can change. I can turn the pot. And it changes. What time are we at? Oh, good. All right. We might. We're not going to have time to do this really cool patch that I wanted to do with this data, but at least we'll be able to do something. Uh, okay. So let's try sending this to down the max hole. Uh, so MXJ. Uh, what was it? MXJ space net dot max hole. You're going to have to now reconnect to the uh, disguise net, or this won't work. So connect. make sure you're connected to disguise net up here. So net.maxhole should send data to, to everyone and from everyone on a, the same network. It broadcasts it to all IPs like a shotgun. So I should be able to send you guys info. Uh, I just want to make sure that you guys aren't then sending it back to me and we end up getting a, a, a loop, right? So I'm going to send the stuff coming out of this down the max hole. You guys don't send it anywhere. You should only have a max hole that you're receiving info. Okay, do you guys get this, these zeros from your net.maxhole object? 
except for you. Damn Windows. I don't have an outlet. Your net dot max hole doesn't have an outlet. All right, let me see. Take a look. It's, I'm still having a problem with Java. So your job is not yeah. working. And I, I, so yay, Java. OK, uh, shit. There's one other thing I can try. Um, hold on. I can try to broadcast it via UDP broadcast. I have to figure out what the UDP broadcast uh, thing is, IP address is, which Let's see, if config. Uh, multicast. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, broadcast. That's what I thought it was. Okay, great. All right, let me try this. Instead of net max hole, let me try a... UDP send 192, whoops, 192. You guys don't need to do this. 192, 168, 1, should go to everybody. Oh, and I have port. Let's say port 7,000. Okay, now have a receive, UDP receive. 7,000. Got data? Yay! All right, we can do this then, huh? UDP receive 7,000. That's all you need, Charlotte. A UDP receive 7,000 with a message attached to it. Okay? All right. Uh, what were we doing with this? Uh, oh, we were looking at how you can um, how you can get info from the the Arduino and trigger things with it. All right, so we have this UDP seven thousand. Actually, let's move it down back by where our other stuff is. Okay, so I could easily just unpack this now. Unpack I, 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 I. And I could put those into toggles and a slider. Go ahead and duplicate the slider from up here that already has the range that we want. Patch those in there, and now you get this. There's a little bit of noise. I could probably, if I did some filtering with some resistors, I could make my potentiometer not spike when I hit a button, but it's not that big of a deal. For, for this, it doesn't matter at all. Okay. Yeah, question. So when you're, when you're uh, I'm only getting like a... It's turning it all the way on for all the time. So do you didn't copy the, your slider from up here? Yeah. Then you didn't set the range right the first time. Go into your input. Uh, uh, go into your slide. Click on your slider and click on I for uh, ins command I for inspector, mm -hmm. and then go to range and set it to ten twenty three. Okay. And so now you guys all have my values, yeah? Okay, I'm going to take your silence as yes. Cool. All right. So there. Um, the only thing else I was going to do, if if it didn't take this long, I would have we would have built a patch to utilize this data. I might as well. We have enough time for me to just give you the patch, and we can play around with it and see how we can utilize this data. Uh, let me put it on the website really quick. Shit. Oh, right. So for now, go ahead and switch networks back down to CalArts Secure or whatever. Back on the internet. Uh, and go to this class website.
Um, so download these, all these other objects, the fan objects and the sounds, and I will add the, the file here. Actually, I should clip it out really quick. Well, whatever. I'm going to give you my file. It's a little messy. It was a prep for class today that I didn't get a chance to completely clean up, but just to save time, I'm just going to give it to you, um, even though it's a little messy. Downloads, class 10. All right, let me save this. Uh, why? Okay. Is it there? Okay, great. So download class 10. Download all those other objects. All right, and open up the class 10 patch. Um, sorry. There it is. So, let's see. Okay, so you're probably, we need to, there's a few things we need to populate in this to get it to work. First of all, if you save your fan body and your fan blade.obj that you downloaded that were zipped, you have to unzip those fan objects. You, after you unzip them, you have to put them in your max 7 directory or someplace that you've already set up that uh, Max knows about, okay? Then you have to, uh, then the sounds, we gotta plug in the sounds. So just unzip the sounds and uh, you can just drag them over each one of these things to replace it. So fridge hum, drag it over, fridge hum, button on is on the bottom, button off is on the top. Wind, punch, and light switch. Okay. Now, if you turn on, <laughs> uh, somewhere is a jit.world. Here it is. Like I said, I didn't get a chance to clean this up. Uh, find the jit.world. If you hit turn it on, you should have the fan in there and the snake, and his snake is hanging. And this fan is in two different pieces, and I attached one of the, the fan blade onto a hinge, and I was able to offset it so that it lined up with the other hand, fan. And I can, you can manually flick it around, but the cooler thing to do is use the Arduino, and if I go and make sure my is connected, you guys don't do this because you guys won't be able to get this info. Um, but once I have my Arduino connected, then, oh shoot, what's wrong? Am I just getting jittery data? Yeah. It, oh, come on. I think I'm getting jittery data. Or maybe, what is going on? All right, hold on, maybe I need to close my other patch. That's probably what's going on. Let's see. Yes, okay. It was just it was an interaction with sends in the other patch. Okay. So, I've mapped this these buttons out to do a few things. I can the first one uh this button is a little jittery. This middle button. This first one turns on the fan. And if you listen closely, there's a little click sound of you turning on the fan, and then the fan makes an electric hum. Then the potentiometer changes the speed of the fan. And as the speed 
increases. It increases ghost forces, and it also turns up the volume. Man, my uh, performance is really bad. Oh, because I'm screen recording. And pushes that snake away from the fan, so it's like the wind is blowing it. Right? I, I think it'll work a lot better on your guys' computers once I send you the, the data. So let me send you the data now. Did I close the other patch? I think I did. Uh, so now, what was it that I needed to send it down? We needed a um, UDP receive 7,000. Oh, right. Thank you. So connect back to DisguiseNet. Okay. UDP receive 7,000. You've closed your other patch, saved and closed it. So close and sa save and close your other patch, and I will send you my Arduino data. Um, here we go. UDP P send 192, 168, 1, 255. Oh, and I need a port 7,000. And if I just send this here and we receive it yeah okay so you guys all you have to do is replace your serial object with this UDP object so come down move this UDP down here and you patch it into the cell 10 and into the ZL group I'm not going to do it on mine because it'll cause a loop All right, so you patch it into the cell 10 and into the ZL group from the UDP received. Let me see if I, actually I can try it on mine. Let's try it on mine. Let me make sure it works. It might, you might get jittery results because of the, there we go. So you guys are getting a whole bunch of different, I'm, I'm hearing a whole bunch of different triggers. Um, so take a look at what's coming out of the ZL group object here. Do you guys have, oh, I'm sorry, uh, sorry, the, um, I2A, the, f actually coming out of the from symbol, do you have this string of numbers or is yours guys fluctuating a lot more than mine? You should have a 0, 0, 10, 23. And when I hit the button, you should see a 1. Yeah, um, that's what I was afraid of, is the, it's networking issues. All right. Well, anyway, this would work if you had an Arduino attached. So the, 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 the problem is, and this is a, this is a common problem, uh, the problem is, is that we are trying to send uh, data over the internet or over the network and it's dropping a few packets here and there and that because it's serial data, if you miss one of your numbers that tells you when your message ends, then that screws everything up and you end up with a string of numbers that's too long and so when you try to parse it out, the wrong number ends up in the wrong spot and you get triggers that are false, right? So... Um, how much time do we have left? Do we have any time left? Oh, we have negative one minutes. I could, the only thing, oh, right here, we did it. Um, no, we didn't. We did do it. It's this, this prepend stuff. If I attach this, I could probably send you guys, um, oh, wait, right. I need to put these down here. If I can probably send you guys the values via OSC and it won't be as jittery. Um, you guys won't have to change anything. It'll be just the same. No, it won't. Never mind. We're out of time. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, so homework is, you, is to give me, I need to know what your final project is. I'm not going to give you any homework on this serial stuff or this communication stuff because it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, there's nothing, there's not a lot you could do with it. But um, 
So uh, by next class, I need to you need to have emailed me what your final project is and get back to me about what it is. Um, it would also be great if you had something started on that project. We're going to start from now on, I believe, toward the end of class. I want to give you guys a little bit of lab time at the end of each class to work on your final projects and have me in the room to help you with little issues you might be having. So email me about what your final is, uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And then go ahead and get started on the first parts of that. You know, if it's a if it's a graphical patch, then get your jit.world and get your objects in there and get your physics in there, uh, physics objects in there. And then if you have questions about how to make this interact with this thing, that's the kind of stuff that we can do, we can work together on during that lab time. Okay? So that's the homework is just make sure you correspond with me as soon as possible about what your final is and then uh, have something started on it for next time so that we have we can have an effective lab period.